Good morning and welcome to Amelia Methodist Church this morning. Welcome to those of you who are at home and we're so glad that you have joined us this morning. Okay, just a few moments. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say good morning, but just for a few moments. Thank you, that was much better, much better. <laughs> Now I won't get in trouble for taking too much time to greet one another. So um, for other announcements, uh, flowers, if you would like to order flowers uh, for the altar, um, please sign up on the board out in the narthex. It's on near the windows. Um, so if you would sign up, and if you would sign up if you want something for March this week, that would be very helpful. Um, if you are interested in a name tag, there are more name tags, again, out in the narthex. Um, Barb has graciously made those for us, and we are so grateful. Thank you, Barb. They're wonderful. Um, Brandy, you have an announcement. Okay, these little interest forms, we started passing them out last week. We still have plenty in the back if you want to grab one. We're growing. We're entering a new season. A lot of changes. But we need to know who wants to be plugged in where. Um, you know, even those that have been here for years, it would be nice to know what you're interested in doing. So there's quite a few options on here. Um, check them off. Put your name and contact information at the bottom. It'll go to the leaders of these different groups and committees and things like that. Just because you sign that you want to be on it doesn't mean automatically mean you'll be put on it. Um, depends on how many they have, things like that. And something that was pointed out to me last week, if there's something on here that, well, if there's not something on here that you have a really great idea for or want to do, just write it on the paper. Um, I can't think of everything. I'm only one person. <laughs> so um, I did the best I could, but if you have other ideas, go ahead and put it on there. Um, you can either give them to me, you can put them in the offering plates. Basically, it'll go into the office, we'll get the list together, get them out to the leaders, and we'll get people plugged in. So thank you. And James has an announcement, but while he's walking up here, uh, he and his wife shared with me that, I'm sorry, James, I know I told you you could do this, but I can't help it. Um, Pastor Miguel at, um, in Brisas del Mar, um, at the pastor of, I'm going to call them our sister church in Colombia, just has welcomed a new baby girl into their family. Can you flash those pictures for us, Frank, because she's beautiful. So just one quick thing. Just a reminder, there is still one more week to do Kairos cookies. There are some sheets in the back by the um, offering plate. There's instructions in here for what you need to do, two dozen in a gallon sized bag. You can drop them off with Brandy in the office until Thursday. She'll be here till two o'clock. Okay. Um, worst case scenario, if you do not get here by Thursday, if you bring them to church next Sunday, we don't go into the prison until the ninth. I'll pick some up and we'll get them into the prison. One other thing that you can do if you would like, we do a 72 hour prayer vigil. The whole time that we're in the prison, we have people praying over the weekend for the, the team, for the, the residents that are on the weekend. If you are interested in that, I will put this back at the welcome table and we'll get your name added to the prayer chain. Um, it's very meaningful for the guys that are on the team and for those residents that take part in the weekend. So a couple ways that you can participate um, uh, in the weekend. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. Kind of to piggyback off of that, um, I remember being on my Emmaus walk and um, there were letters posted for us to read that were um, letters of thought and prayer for us. And I remember one of them being from the Kairos teams and it was, it was very meaningful to me. So um, if you would like, please, uh, fill in for that prayer, that 72 hour prayer. That would be wonderful. Pastor Ed has a few words. Mark also has something he wants to say. Come 
Good morning. Um, out in the uh, narthex is a whiteboard. The admin council voted several months ago to replace the sign that's out front. And uh, several weeks ago, we asked the congregation for, to submit ideas for the letter, for the, for the header of that sign. Out in narthex is a whiteboard, and there are several um, images that you could select and we'd like to get your input on that. So if you would, look at that and maybe put a sticker on the one that you would like. So that's going to be our new sign out front, okay? Thank you. In kind of in uh, um, relation to that is just to announce, some of you maybe did not stay last week. Of course, I wasn't here last week, but uh, the congregation did vote, about a 90% vote to uh, join the Global Methodist Church. So uh, the uh, forms and stuff are being filled out. We'll get it submitted in. We have to request to, re, uh, to be in the global, and so that's being done. Uh, I, was, I meant to bring it with me. I forgot, but I, I also have my certificate from the bishop saying that I am an elder in the Global Methodist Church now. So... Uh, so we have all that's done, and uh, we will be moving uh, forward that direction in the next near, near time. Uh, it should uh, be more semantics than, you know, just uh, red tape than it is anything else. Uh, they're not going to turn us down. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll be glad for that, and um, we uh, uh, will move forward in whatever area the Lord's got for us to go. Just one other announcement. Those who are in my Sunday school class, that would be sixth graders on up. You can automatically can be in that class. Um, we're going to be meeting next Sunday during Sunday school. We're going to meet up here in the sanctuary. So um, we're going to start a new prayer ministry with the teens. And uh, we're going to pray over all the pews. We're going to pray over everything that's going to go on, preparing ourselves for worship and preparing everything for worship. So you be in prayer for the teens. They're going to be praying for you and praying for what's going to be going on in the sanctuary. We're going to become a prayer center for the church among the teenagers. Uh, and so I think uh, it'll serve the church well. They're wanting to see revival. They're wanting to see the presence of God. And I think we all do. You know, um, some, quite a few of you, I, 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 don't, I won't ask for a, a show of hands, but quite a few of you got down to the Asbury Revival, which is, it's still going on, it's just shifted off the campus. I think they were having a big prayer worship gathering to that tonight, uh, which is actually the revival moving off the campus at Rupp Arena at the University of Kentucky. They're going to fill up arena as for prayer and worship uh, tonight. So uh, that's going to be a, um, another thing. And the presence of the Lord was so real there. And it's told me this, that there is a hunger among our teenagers for the presence of God. These college kids are longing for the presence of God. And then I also noticed, the problem is most of the teenagers are hungry for the presence of God, but they don't think the church has it. And that's a sad thing, but that's the reality. But it, there is many adults. The last, uh, somebody was just down there, and they said there were, there were over 5,000 people there. And the auditorium only holds 1,500. So all the grass area in front was covered with people and, and screen outside where they could see and big speakers. And people are just flocking in. Adults, as there's as many adults as there are college kids, which tells me there's a hunger for the presence of God among adults in our world, too. They're driving from South Carolina and Mississippi and all over to get there, to be in the presence of God. Let's be praying for the presence of God. Because uh, when the presence of God here at our will seem like it's not near enough. We sat there for four or five hours of worship, and you didn't want to leave. And the same was true even with the 10 and 11-year-olds. They didn't want to leave. Uh, five hours is a long time to worship for, a, for an 11-year-old. 
Uh, but that's the feel of the presence of God. So we're going to be praying for that. The youth are going to be leading the charge, I think, and uh, the, t- my, uh, the Sunday school class. So kids in the class, if you haven't been with us, come join us. We're going to meet in here at 930 during Sunday school, and we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to pray for the Sunday school classes. We're going to pray for the worship that's going on. So be in prayer for us. That was more than a few words, wasn't it? I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it's always dangerous to let a preacher in the mind. Okay, if we could do our memory verse for the week. Thank you. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. The presence of God does not have to stay at Asbury. It can be anywhere. So let us welcome that presence into our hearts this morning and into the sanctuary with silent prayer. verse this morning comes from Psalm 27, 13 and 14 from the New American Standard Bible version. I would have despaired unless I had believed that that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please let us rise and sing praises to our Lord and Savior this morning.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. The Malks have asked for prayer for their niece, Julie, who has serious health issues. So let's remember Julie in prayer. And uh, Marlene's uh, sister, Nancy, and her husband, Fred, they're going through multiple medical issues, uh, life ending for Fred. So let's uh, remember them in your prayers as well. Louise uh, Pike is having surgery tomorrow morning, so let's remember Louise in our prayers. Uh, praise from Laurel, that uh, praise to our Savior for good test results. So we're thankful for that, Laurel. We've been praying for Laurel. And then Arlene is having uh, epidural on Tuesday, so let's remember Arlene in our prayers as well. Are there any unspoken requests for prayer that you want to indicate with the lifted hand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you are the Lord, and you are high and lifted up. And worthy is your name, and holy is your name. We worship you. Because, Lord, we know that you are God. There is no other. Lord, we seek your presence. We want to be in the presence of God. We want to know and feel and sense that we are there, Lord. Father, we know that we're always in your presence, but Lord, there are times when you come down and you come near to us. And there are times that we sense your presence and times that we don't. May this be a time when we know that we're in your presence. And may your Holy Spirit work in each of our hearts, in each of our lives. May he bring healing. May he bring comfort. May he bring all of the things, Lord, that are necessary for our lives, Lord. And Father, may we submit ourselves to you so that you might use us, Lord, to build your kingdom. We are your people. You are God. We are your creation. Father, we bring to you our request for prayer. We lift these to you who need a healing touch this morning, Father, knowing that you are the great physician and nothing is impossible for you. Reach out your hand, we pray, Lord. May we see the power of the Holy Spirit move. And Father, may we, we give you the glory and the honor and may you receive praise that's due to your name, Lord. We lift our burdens and care. You know every one of our silent requests this morning, Father, because you know each one of us by name. You know every burden, you know every care, every concern that we have. So Father, we cast them on you. Bear us up, we pray. Give us faith to trust you. Give us faith, Lord, to believe even when we don't see. Simply because we know that you're good. We know that your mercy endures forever. And Father, we just praise your name. As we worship, may Jesus be lifted above every name. He is our Lord. He is our Savior, and He is our King. And it's in His name we pray. Amen. Just a little talk. 
Children are dismissed for junior church at this time. And I'm going to invite you to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Beginning with verse 25. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens who created all these. He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, that my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk 
and not be faint. Let us pray. Lord, your word is precious to us because it is truth. And you have given it to us, Lord, and we believe. Now, Father, give us wisdom as we study it together, as we think upon it, Lord. May your Holy Spirit be upon us. May he empower us, Lord. Lead us to the center of truth, we pray. And Father, teach us. Teach us your word. We pray it in your name. Amen. There's a phrase I heard in a song a week or two, a couple weeks ago. It was just a phrase in the song, and it just stuck to me. The phrase was very simple, but God. But God. In fact, I think that might have been the name of the song. But God. God. Remember that phrase. Because the Bible has a lot to say about it. Sometimes you and I think that we are all that there is. That if anything's going to be done, we got to do it. Sometimes we think that something's gone to a place and it can never change. And then comes that, but God. It's all through the Bible. Old Testament through the New Testament. From the beginning to the end. In fact, the Bible begins with the fact that there is absolutely nothing there. But God speaks a word. And he creates the universe. But God speaks and animals appear and, 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 and plants appear. And then God speaks and goes to work and a man and a woman are made. Nothing was there, but God does, began to act. He is the creator of the universe, we're told in the passage. And when he acts, everything's possible. Oh, you can trace it through the whole story uh, of the Bible. You know, everyone has bowed to other gods and made other gods. And it looks like the whole world is, is turned to idolatry. They've rejected the God of the universe. And they've turned and made their own gods and their own image and the image of things around them. And it looks like there's no way it's ever going to change but God calls a man named Abraham. And out of Abraham, uh, when he responds to him, he builds a great nation that's going to be a light to the world to show them that there's another way that's going to be a light that can bring them back to God again. It looked like there was no hope, but God called Abraham and made a great nation Children of Israel are coming out of Egypt and Pharaoh is chasing them. And they find themselves with their backs against the Red Sea. And Pharaoh's army is on the other side. And they are without hope. They're going to be slaughtered. They're going to be destroyed. But God. And God intervenes again. And he parts the water of the Red Sea. And they walked across on dry ground. I heard of a professor teaching in one of our modern seminaries. And he was saying, well, there was no great miracle that took place there. That at that part of the Red Sea, it was probably only about two feet deep. So could, they could have easily crossed. And a student in the back yelled, praise God, what a miracle. Pharaoh's whole army and all their horses drowned in two feet of water. Amen. You can have it either way you want. <laughs> they had no hope but God intervened and God sent them took them through the waters of the Red Sea 
and took them on a cross to the promised lands. Israel has the impossible task of trying to capture a walled city. How in the world, without swords, without any of this equipment that you would think you would need, how in the world do you capture a world city? It's an impossible task for Joshua, but God. And God steps in and tears the walls down. And they went a great victory there at Jericho. Israel's army is cowering in the presence of a giant named Goliath. And the whole army, Saul's whole army is cowering. And it looks like the Philistines have won the day. There's no hope for Israel against them. But God sends a shepherd boy. Just a kid. And he slays that mighty giant. And Saul's army wins the battle. But God intervened. Oh, you could go all through the pages of the Bible. Daniel is going to be sent into a lion's den. He's being sent to his, his death. But God closed the mouth of the lions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego heading into a fiery furnace that's so hot that even the guards that are putting them in are consumed by the fire. They're going to be burned alive in the fire. But God intervenes. Do you not know? Have you not heard? He is the Lord of all creation. He sits at the center of the universe. And nothing is impossible for God. The whole world is lying in darkness. They're dying in their sins. They're headed for a lost eternity. Separated from God. The Bible says it's a deep darkness across the earth. The religious people of the day are of no use. The whole world is in rebellion. The religious people are completely out of touch. They're bound for the fires of hell. They have no hope. But God sends his son into the world. He becomes flesh and dwells among us. And he dies on a cross to save us from our sins. You see, when there's no hope, there's always the but God. You got to always figure it in. Oh, Satan learned that lesson well. Because the religious leaders of the day, teaming up with Satan and all of his forces, they've got him killed. They've got him in a grave. They've won the battle. But God raises him from the dead. Conquers sin and death. And sits him at the right hand of God. Oh, that but God's important, folks. Amen? Amen. It's important that, but God, the early church has got to go into a world and take this message and take this gospel. They're not learned people. They're not wealthy people. They're a whole range of people from slaves right on up to a few that are wealthy. 
They got to go into a world that's already got its own religions and already believes certain things. And they're going to have to take the message to the world. The religious people are going to be fighting against them. The Roman Empire will be fighting against them. What hope do they have? There's only uh, about 140 of them. They're about the size of this church. What hope do they have? But God. He fills them with their Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And God places his power in the church. And they go out into that world. And they turn the world upside down. To where the Roman Empire decays and crumbles. The synagogues became insignificant. But the church has carried on for 2,000 years. But God acted. He gave him power. Oh, there's a man. He's one of the top intellectuals of the world at that time. He knows all their intellectual things, but he's a man who is fighting against God. And he hates the church. And everywhere he goes, he's persecuting the church. And he's carrying them off as captives. And he's arresting the Christians for being Christians. And he's part of the group that kills some of them. And he's breathing out threats against the people of God. But God acts. And he meets him on a road to Damascus. And Saul, the great persecutor of the church, his life is turned completely around. And he becomes the greatest evangelist the world has ever known. And its greatest missionary. He blazed across Asia Minor, planting church after church. God took that man, turned the church around. He became the leader. We know him as the Apostle Paul. And we still learn from him. God, when God moves into the scene, what a difference it makes. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. You say, preacher, What in the world does this have to do with us? Claremont County lies in darkness. The church has seemed powerless against it. About all the churches across the denominational lines are declining. They're getting smaller. The population gets larger. And there's a heavy darkness over the counter. County. In some ways, it looks like a hopeless task. The young people seem disinterested. How in the world do we reach them? But I want to say to you this morning, but God. And I think he's raising up a church. I think he's bringing us together through the power of the Spirit. And God is raising a church that's going to be able to reach the needs of our county and the areas around us. Amen? I believe he's doing it. I think there's a reason why he's putting us together. But God, and I know at this particular time in our our life and in our history, we're venturing off into things we don't know much about. 
And it's a bit scary sometimes when we look down the road and we're coming from various places and joining together. And we're moving into a denomination. We don't know what it's going to be like totally. We have an idea. And sometimes there's fear. And, and some of us would say we should probably just stay like we are independent because it's working pretty good independent. And we don't know about that. Well, that's a good reason. And it doesn't matter what the future looks like. You and I can't see down that road very far. But I'll tell you one thing. There is always the but God. Amen. And the but God is sufficient for our need. The power of God that can, is flowing it, it is, a God, is a power that can move. He can move with power among us. And whatever lies ahead of us, we're not afraid because the but God is there. Have you not heard? Do you not know? He is the Lord of creation. And if God is in our midst, we have the but God. It doesn't depend on you. It doesn't depend on me. God is with us. And he's the Lord of creation. And even if we find ourselves in a fiery furnace, but God. Even if we have to face a giant like Goliath, there's the but God. Even if there's a wall in front of us, there's the but God. Even though the task seems so great and we seem so small, there's always the but God. And I'll say this to you this morning, that if God could take a handful of people in an upper room, fill them with his spirit and turn the world upside down, he can take a handful of people within this room and fill us with his spirit and turn our community upside down. Amen? Amen? But God. There may be a lot of things we don't have. But the only thing we need is the but God. And if we'll trust him. You may be amazed at what he can do. Sometimes you and I have to just get out of the way and let God, don't we? We limit him. Our dreams are too small. I, I know many of you have come to join us. I don't know what your dream is of the future, but I can tell you this, it's too small. I know all of us have decided we're, we're going to pull out and we're going to move forward in a different venture. And I don't know what we're picturing or what we think God's going to do in, in this new venture. But I can tell you this, our dream is too small. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. And he will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. We've got a great future together. But let me take a, another step. You may be going through some difficult times in your life. Maybe you've heard the word cancer. Maybe you have loved ones that are dying. Maybe you have children that are out there. And you've tried to reach them, but they just don't listen. Maybe you've come to a place in your life which you're almost ready to give up.
And you don't know what you're going to do next. Don't quit. There's the but God. And God can take whatever situation you're in. It may be a fiery furnace, but he can bring you through it and out again. It may be a den of lions. Sometimes those relatives can be that. (laughs) He can take you in, and he can bring you back out again. Listen to me. The book God applies to each of our lives, too. We never quit. We never give up. There's always God. And he can do what you can't. And he can do what I can't. And he can do what we can't. Even together. Our best days are ahead. I don't know what they'll be, but God is with us. And his spirit overshadows us. And when God is with us, the but God makes all the difference in the world. Amen? Amen. Father in heaven, may we have eyes to see and ears to hear. And hearts that understand that with you, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible without you, Father. When you're involved, there's always the but God. Walls fall down, seas part. The dead rise. The blinded eyes see. Kingdoms topple at the sound of your name. And Father, even death, that last great enemy, will have no staying because you've given us the resurrection. So, Father, may our faith be in you. May we look to you and we ask that your Holy Spirit would move in our midst and that, Father, you would move. You're the creator. Everything's possible. We submit and surrender ourselves to you. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and join in our closing hymn. heaven we give you praise for you have given us the victory because Lord you are the Lord of all creation may we walk from this place in victory knowing that we are walking with you and that your power is sufficient for all of our need we pray our Lord in the name of Christ Amen.